Computer tape number SWE 24A. Sugar. Emerson once said, Ever since I was a boy, I have wished to write a discourse on compensation. Likewise, for many years, I have wished to narrate a cassette tape on sugar. The resources I have collected for years consist of several books as well as articles <clears throat> on the subject of refined sugar and sweets. The main books referred to and recommended are Sugar Blues by William Dusty, Sweet and Dangerous by John Yudkin, Sweet Suicide by Gene Wright, The Bitter Truth about Artificial Sweeteners by Dennis Remington, Lick the Sugar Habit by Nancy Appleton, The Sacrum Disease by T.O. Cleese. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss its use, abuse, and misuse. The essential elements of the claims for and against sugar will be discussed throughout this treatise. In this tape narration, most of the sources for statements will be omitted, but will be noted in the printout copy of the same. When we explore the queries that evolve out of the subject of sugar and sweets, there are many, many questions that one might ask. For example, is sugar hurtful to the body? If so, then how and why is it so? Are the mental and emotional factors affected by sugar? It is hoped that the answers to the foregoing questions, as well as many more, will be covered in the information to follow. Claim number one is, <clears throat> the sugar habit is addicting and a very severe one. Paraphrasing Ralph Sinkay, quote, and sub substituting the word sugar addictions for food addiction, we read, more than alcohol, more than tobacco, and more than coffee, sugar addiction is the hardest one to break. Again, quoting from Gene Wright's book, Sweet Suicide, alcoholism and sugar addiction are remarkably alike. Both addicts obsessively drink and eat their favorite poisons, and as a result, both suffer the same nutritional defects. Evidence suggests that the two addictions may in actuality be one and the same. Many of us live our lives in a progressive sequence of addictions, from sugar to caffeine, from caffeine to nicotine, and from nicotine to alcohol. End of quote. Another quote, sugar abuse is the world's least discussed and most widespread addiction, and it is one of the hardest of all habits to keep. An excess of lactic acid in the body is caused by excessive consumption of sugar. If not converted to body energy, the sugar turns into lactic acid and combines with protein to cause ailments such as headaches, fatigue, and high blood pressure. When joint fluid is withdrawn in a normal person, the sugar content is approximately 80 milligrams per 100 centimeters of fluid. In an orthoritic with a fasting stomach, the percentage of sugar would be about the same. But give the orthoritic with a degenerative intestinal wall one bottle of carbonated soda pop, and in 20 minutes, the sugar content of the joint fluid would triple. Tumors are primarily sugar feeders, meaning that they are fueled by blood glucose, not fats or protein. Americans not only consume about 20% of their calories from refined sugar, but also ride the roller coaster of wild swings in blood, uh, blood glucose levels. This constant intravenous infusion of cancer fuel is a primary reason for our cancer incidence. By maintaining lower levels of glucose, uh, the patient can selectively starve the tumor while also reaping the benefits of lower insulin output, which favorably steers prostaglandin synthesis. Also, the sodium to potassium ratio in the American diet favors the growth of tumors. It has been speculated that a high salt diet Changes the dynamics of all cell membranes and makes the passage of oxygen 
and nutrients more difficult to cross the membrane barrier. The atmosphere then becomes ideal for cancer growth. Heart disease today's number one killer is another condition made worse by vitamin deficiency. Especially bad for the heart is deficiency of, B, of vitamin B1 or thiamine, which a person develops from excessive eating of refined sugar, as explained in this article. Hardening of the arteries and high blood pressure result from the use of refined sugar in the diet. It also causes calcium deposits in the vessels. When much refined sugar is eaten, the blood serum and phosphorus ratio drop and continues to drop for several hours. During this time, calcium apparently being absorbed from the bones rises in the blood serum to a high level. Thus, at a time about six hours after a few ounces of candy or ice cream have been eaten, the serum phosphorus is very low, and the serum calcium is undesirably high. Recovery from this condition takes from hours to days. This excess calcium in the blood serum of patients who frequently eat refined sugar may be an important factor in the cause of calcification of arteries, as well as other diseases associated with abnormal calcium deposits, such as cataracts, arthritis, kidney stones, dental calculus, and even bone formation in the lungs and heart. One point is escapable, inescapable, as sugar consumption escalates in countries over the world. Fatal diseases increase. We must study. Sugar is worse than nothing because it drains and leaches the body of precious vitamins and minerals. Through the demand it makes upon one's entire system, sugar takes every day sugar taken every day produces a continuously overactive condition, and more and more minerals are required from deep in the body in the attempt to rectify the imbalance. Finally, in order to protect the blood, so much calcium is taken from the bones and teeth that decay and general weakening begins. John Yudkin, M.D. and Ph.D., a well-known British physician and biochemist, wrote in Nature a few years ago that, quote, In our studies of dental caries in 15 to 18-year-olds, there was a positive correlation between the degree of dental caries and the amount of sugar taken in solid foods. Dr. Norman Applebaum recently reported in Family Health that within two to five minutes after eating sugar, bacteria in plaque convert the sugar to acid. It can cause an acid state in the mouth for a full hour. Dental caries can be greatly reduced if sweets are not taken. When they are, teeth and the mouth should be rinsed immediately. In a series of several hundred arthritics, nearly all ate large quantities of sugar. Sugar disturbs calcium, phosphorus, balance. More than any other factor, it disturbs it in the direction of higher calcium and lower phosphorus. When the effect of the sugar has worn off, there is a rebound in the opposite direction for action equals reaction. Dr. Manning Burke. Research in the late 1970s showed that triglyceride levels are greatly increased on a high refined carbohydrate diet. He says that an increase of calories by 60% above normal has little effect on triglycerides or cholesterol unless there was a corresponding increase in sugar consumption. Researchers at the Nathan Princeton Research Foundation have found that it takes six months to induce adult onset diabetes in a healthy individual through the ingestion of excessive amounts of sugar, but only six weeks through the excessive amounts of fats, so they both are extremely bad. 
Refined sugars and starches containing too many calories and too little fiber turn into saturated hard fats. Refined sugars, starches, and oils lack the vitamins and minerals necessary for their own metabolism. British researcher John Yudkin blamed sugar for the rise in cardiovascular disease. Sugar consumption is one of the quickest ways to increase triglycerides because our body turns sugar into fats to protect itself from the toxic effects of excess sugar. Sugar also increases oxidation damage, cross-links protein, inhibits immune functions, and interferes with the transport of vitamin C. All of these actions of sugar can affect the development of cardiovascular and other degenerative diseases. A refined carbohydrate that has had a devastating effect upon the health is sugar. Annual consumption of sugar by the average American in 1984 was 126.8 pounds, roughly one-third of a pound per day. With table sugar alone, that's six tablespoons a day. Approximately 75% of the sugar wheat is hidden, added to soda cake cookies, mixes, pies, ice cream, candy, cereal, soups, hand fruit, ketchup, salad dressing, bread, yogurt, vitamins, medications, and nearly every processed prepackaged item on the supermarket shelf. Sugar often appears as sucrose, dextrose, glucose, corn sweetener, corn syrup, high fructose, corn syrup, and maltose. There are many ailments linked to sugar excess. Hypoglycemia is a symptom of disordered carbohydrate metabolism. Sufferers experience fatigue, mental confusion, depression, irritability, and anxiety, shakiness, dizziness, headaches, insomnia, and many other problems. Diabetes is another disorder of carbohydrate metabolism. It is a chronic condition characterized by an overabundance of blood sugar. Atherosclerosis can be aggravated by sugar, even in a non-diabetic. Excess dietary sugar can be converted by the body into saturated fat. Sugar can therefore raise blood fat levels, triglycerides, decrease HDL cholesterol and blood cholesterol cleanser, in part by the making linoleic acid, Unavailable and increases the stickiness of an aggregation quality of platelets. All of these contribute to either atherosclerotic plaque formation or thrombosis, putting an individual at an increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and other complications of atherosclerosis and heart attack, etc. Sugar diminishes the strength of the immune system, partly by compromising the ability of uh, neutrophils or white blood cells to engulf foreign invaders like bacteria by this diminishing lymphocyte transformation and by other means. In this way, high sugar levels increase susceptibility to infections and to cancer. Sugar consumption has been correlated with higher incidence of breast cancer in several studies, one of which evaluated this relationship in 21 countries. Sugar can raise blood levels of uric acid causing increased susceptibility to gout. Sugar abuse is associated with personality and behavioral aberrations, even criminal behavior. Depression, fatigue, foggy headedness, nervousness, and other mental and brain disorders have been linked to an allergy to cane sugar corn sugar, and beet sugar. Laboratory animal studies have confirmed the potential adverse effects of sugar on the kidneys and have linked its overuse to hypertension. Some researchers feel that sugar leaches vitamins and minerals from the body, leading to nutritional deficiencies. Sugar certainly induces calcium loss in the urine, contributing to the possibility of developing osteoporosis as well as other calcium deficiencies. 
related ailments, muscular cramps, menstrual cramps, insomnia, nervousness, hypertension, etc. Sugar-induced calcium loss in the urine has been also linked to kidney stones. The enzymes used to metabolize sugar into stored energy or fat require specific cofactor vitamins and minerals. As sugar and the refined foods rich in sugar do not replace the micronutrients used in their metabolism, deficiencies are incurred. Sugar, you see, is a metabolic preloader, as it seems to fill a large percentage of our diet by displacing more wholesome nutrients rich foods, it contributes further to nutrient de deficiencies. Sugar can lead to obesity through a number of mechanisms. By increasing blood insulin levels, fat storage is encouraged. In addition, it takes a very small quantity of sugar or sugar-rich food to deliver an alarming number of calories. Because sugar and sugar-rich foods contain little or no fiber, it is easy to consume them in large quantities before feeling full, by which time you have taken in a tremendous number of calories. Another mechanism involves the overloading of energy-producing biochemical pathways, and these pathways are overburdened with sugar molecules. They can be shunted or shifted away from energy and glycogen production toward the production of fat. Sugar feeds Candida, uh, our resident yeast, and is a significant contributor to the growing yeast epidemic. Sugar can become an addiction and can therefore impair an individual on multiple levels. Excess dietary sugar can increase the incidence of gallstones. Sugar in the immune system. Since 1973, there have been several scientific studies that have provided strong evidence of sugar's negative effect on the immune system's ability to function effectively. White blood cells, including the T helper cells, are adversely affected by excessive amounts of sugar in the bloodstream. A research study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 1973 showed that when white blood cells are exposed to high levels of sugar in the bloodstream, they had a decreased ability to engulf bacteria. The greatest effect occurred between one and two hours after a liquid sugar meal, but their ability was depressed for up to five hours afterwards. In this study, test subjects were divided into five groups. Group one received a placebo, and acted as a control for the study. Groups 2, 3, and 4, and 5 received a liquid drink containing 6, 12, 18, and 24 teaspoons of sugar, respectively. Blood samples were taken from these individuals at a half hour, one hour, two, and three, and five hours after consuming the drink. The samples were then incubated with a suspension of Staphylococcus bacteria and were viewed under a microscope. The number of bacteria that were engulfed by each white blood cell was counted and averaged for each group. The result, results of the study showed that the group which consumed no sugar had an average of 14 bacteria engulfed by each white blood cell. There was a progressive decline in the number of bacteria engulfed by each uh, group's white cells as their sugar consumption increased. At six teaspoons of sugar, the average number of engulfed bacteria was 10 per white blood cell. At 12 teaspoons of sugar, the average number was 5.5 per white blood cell. At 18 teaspoons of sugar, the average was 2 per white blood cell. And after 24 teaspoons of sugar, the average number of bacteria destroyed per white blood cell was only one. Ingesting 24 teaspoons of sugar, the equivalent of two cans of soda, produced a 92% decrease in the white blood cells' ability to engulf bacteria. Other studies performed at Rockefeller University in New York provide evidence that protein molecules 
which are present in all cells can be adversely affected by elevated levels of sugar in the bloodstream. High concentrations of sugar combined with protein molecules to form advanced G-L-Y-C-O-S-Y-L-A-T-I-O-N in products or AGE. AGE particles act like glue, binding protein molecules together to form a rigid lattice network known as cross-linking. These large protein molecules can inhibit the function of the immune system, blur vision, and cause damage to the kidneys and lungs. <coughs> Ingesting large amounts of processed sugar also puts great stress on the body in general. The total sugar content normally present in your bloodstream is approximately one teaspoon. When a person consumes a can of soda or a bowl of ice cream containing an average sugar content of 12 teaspoons, the digestive system must work extremely hard to pre prevent this amount of sugar from entering the bloodstream all at once. To produce sufficient insulin for processing this amount of sugar, the pancreas must also work extremely hard. This stress is not helpful for the immune system. I reread the sentence above. The total sugar content normally present in your bloodstream is approximately one teaspoon. When a person consumes a can of soda or a bowl of ice cream containing an average sugar content of 12 teaspoons, the digestive system must work extremely hard to prevent this amount of sugar from entering the bloodstream all at once. In the United States, 6 million people suffer from diabetes, a disease characterized by two high levels of sugar in the blood. If untreated, these high levels of sugar lead to an impairment of the blood vessel walls and cardiovascular disease develops. Even if treated with insulin or other drugs, the risk of cardiovascular disease in these patients is high. The form of cardiovascular disease occurring in diabetic patients is particularly malicious. Circulatory problems and clogging of arteries can occur in virtually every part of the blood vessel system. Any of the following events can strike a diabetic patient at any time. Blindness from clogging of the arteries of the eye. Kidney failure from clogging of the arteries of the kidneys requiring dialysis. Infractions of the foot arteries eventually requiring amputation, heart attacks from clogging of the coronary arteries, strokes from clogging, clogging of the brain arteries. And now reading from page 130 to 131 from uh, Rapp's uh, book, quote, at some point Carl's mother noticed that when he ate party food or candy, his total personality quickly and dramatically changed. To check her observation, we asked that we eat, that he eat nothing that contained sugar from Monday to Friday and then come to our office. We videotaped Coral as he gleefully devoured eight cubes of sugar. Just as the mother had predicted, within less than an hour, he switched from Dr. Jekyll to a Mr. Hyde. At first, he stopped playing quietly and began to whine. Then he became more irritable, fussed, stomped his feet, wriggled his hair, tossed his t toys over his head, and then threw pieces of puzzle at his mother. When he was given the correct dilution of the, his allergy extract from sugar, within a few minutes he was transported and formed back into his adorable self again. With animated expression and sheer delight, he pretended to read his mother's story. She was in tears because he had confirmed what she had noticed so often. She realized she was not a bad mother, and he was not a bad kid. Our videotape confirmed exactly what Carl's mother had repeatedly told her pediatrician. The doctor, however, had consistently reassured her that medical research stated that there was no relation between Sugar and her son's behavior. He was correct about some of the medical literature. 
Scientific studies do show that sugar fights mice, but this is not true in the experience of the ecologist in relation to sugar and children. Other studies, however, clearly document, document such a relationship. The repeated changes in Carl's total effect and behavior after he ate sugar simply could not be denied. Sugar, is it all that nice? Do you have any of these problems? Abdominal pains, allergies and anxiety, bedwetting, bloating, breast tenderness, cravings for sweets, the dental cavities, depression, crime bouts, diabetes, diarrhea, dizziness, excessive flu, colds or infection, excessive sweating, fainting, fatigue, fullness, gum disease, headaches, heart disease, high cholesterol level, high triglyceride level, high hyperactivity, low blood sugar, insomnia, irritability, irritable colon, itching, kidney stones, memory loss, menstrual pain, moodiness and mood swings, muscle aches, nausea, obesity, osteoporosis, poor concentration, PMS, seizures, skin nodules, nodules, skin rashes, speedy heart rate, swollen voice box, tremors, weakness, yeast infection, etc. When sugar is eaten and absorbed into the bloodstream, it requires insulin and a trace element called chromium, the element that makes automobile bumpers shiny, to move the sugar in from the bloodstream into the cells where it can be burned for energy. In the diabetic, the insulin is missing. Therefore, sugar piles up in the bloodstream and cannot move into the cell. When insulin is given, the sugar is able to move into the cell and the sugar level will drop in the bloodstream. If chromium is missing, blood sugar will rise again or the sugar is still not able to enter the cell. Per capita sugar consumption in the United States from 1822 to 1973 gives you a picture of the rise in the consumption of sugar through the many decades and years. 1822 was 8.9 pounds. 1835-14.1, 1845-18.7, 1855-29.8, 1870-34.1, 1880-42.6, 1885-49.6, 1913-89, 1929-119, 1939 is 110, 1949 is 110, maintained, 1959, 106, 1965, 114, 1970, 121, 1971, 122, 1972, 124, 1973, 126, and they say in 1995, it's probably 130, plus or minus. Stop. Too much sugar in your diet can turn your personality sour, make you depressed, hostile, and suicidal, and even ruin your marriage, says top experts. Sugar can literally change personality declared Dr. Bruce Halstead, a biotoxiologist and top consultant for the World Health Organization. It can cause a person to become antisocial, aggressive. It does the same thing in children as it does in adults. Sugar is a prime producer of stress. There are studies that indicate people with too much sugar in the diet have a tendency to become much more aggressive, much more easily frustrated, irritable, and irrational. As experts estimate that the average American consumes 128 pounds of sugar a year and gets 25% of all calories directly from refined sugar. Dr. Norman Applebaum recently reported in Family Health that within two to five minutes after eating sugar, bacteria in plaque convert the sugar to acid. It can cause an acid state in the mouth for a full hour. 
<coughs> dental caries can be greatly reduced if sweets are not eaten. Several experiments have been performed trying to find out what causes some people to eat normal amounts of cholesterol to have cholesterol buildups in their arteries, while others who eat more cholesterol don't have a bloodstream highly charged with the substance. And one of them, linchpins in osteosclerosis, seems to be sugar. When human subjects replace sugar in their diet with more complex carbohydrates, there was a definite decrease in the concentration of cholesterol and triglycerides in the bloodstream. What is sugar? It's impossible to say because sugar, that is, white refined sugar, is not a food. It is a pure chemical extracted from plant sources, purer in fact than cocaine, which it resembles in many ways. Its true name is sucrose and its chemical formula is C12H22O11. It has 12 carbon atoms, 22 hydrogen atoms, and 11 oxygen atoms, and absolutely nothing else to offer. Refined sugar has no vitamins, no useful minerals, no enzymes, no tra trace elements, no fiber, no protein. The body needs to maintain a particular level of sugar in the blood, just as it needs to maintain a particular oxygen level. Technically, we need about 120 to 100 milligrams of glucose to body sugar per 100 cc of blood at all times, less than two teaspoonfuls in one entire body. The proper blood sugar level is crucial, especially for brain functioning. We literally cannot think straight if it's too high or too low. G. Hems from the Department of Community Medicine, Forest Hill, Aberdeen, analyzed breast cancer rates in relation to childbearing, various differences in diet, and other factors in 41 countries. He found that consumption of refined sugar was the strongest single factor the first time Research has indicated sugar as a possible cancer-causing substance. Cholesterol is manufactured in the liver from refined carbohydrates as well as saturated fats. Dr. John Yudkin has associated coronary heart disease with refined sugar intake uh, rather than the saturated fats or cholesterol. He draws support from correlational and experimental evidence. In the past century, sugar consumption in America has increased by as much as much by a much higher percentage than the consumption of fats. Yudkin has calculated that Britons now eat as much as refined sugar in two weeks as eighteenth century Britons ate in a year. Just in the past hundred years, the average sugar intake has increased nearly fivefold in Britain. America and other developed countries, as a result of feeding rats amounts of sugar similar to those consumed by people, Yudkin found in large and fatty livers, in large kidneys, and shortened lifespans, premature aging. The body needs some sugar. It is physiological necessity. For it is found as glucose in the blood, but only about one part to one thousand and provide fuel for heat and muscular energy. However, there is much difference in sugar concentration between the mildly sweet foods and that occur in nature and those manufactured from cane or sugar beet. Pure sugar is one of the most concentrated foods known. One lump contains an amount equal to that found in about three feet of sugar cane. As far as sugar is concerned, from an industrial standpoint, it has dozens and dozens and dozens of good uses. For example, quickly, acetone, adhesives, alcohol, animal medicines, ant bait, bacterial cultures, bait traps for moths and insects, water cleaning, flux, cadmium plating, 
calcium glucanate, carbon, carbon brushes, electric motors, cement manufacturing, ceramics, salt manufacturing, chemical and coloring, citric acid, drugs, electrodes, elixirs, embalming fluids, emulsifiers, explosive foundry operations, glass, glue for book binding, glycerin, gold plating, golf balls, hair preparations, hectograph, hog feeding, uh, insulating materials, Kojic acid, leather, liquid soap, lubricating preparations, medical preparations, mirror manufacturing, motor fuel, motor, mortar, nicotine poisons, non sparkling preparations, steam ship use, oxalic acid, packing for automobile housing, paint manufacturing, paper manufacturing, sizing, paste, pharmaceuticals, plastic manufacturing, there's lubricant. Polishes, shoe polish, furniture polish, floor polish, phonograph records, photographic fluids, plastering removing agent, radio tube silvering materials, rat poison, road surfacing material, rubber sealing, rubber, sealing used on containers, silvering solutions, smoke signals, smokeless powder, soap. Stabilizing agent in cloth manufacturing, synthetic rubber, tanning, textile sizing, tungsten wire drawing, varicose vein treatment, varnishes, waterproofing materials, water softeners, welding rods, wood, seasoning, chemical process, and many others. Are we addicted to sugar? Can we answer these questions? The fall? Do you habitually face the day with a donut, coffee cake, or a sweetened uh, food? Do your taste buds require ketchup, mayonnaise, relish, or a special sauce on nearly everything that you eat? Do you keep sweets in the desk, a pocket, or purse to give you a need for lift during the day? Do you always buy the sweetened variety of frozen or canned fruits? and prefer juice drinks to real juice? Do you find yourself making an extra trip to the store when you have run out of soft drinks? Do you feel so unsatisfied unless you finish a meal with a sweet dessert? Do you need a dish of ice cream or a piece of cake before bedtime in order to sleep well? Does an eating binge of cookies or candy calm your jangled nerves? If you have answered yes to any of these foregoing questions, Consider yourself a bona fide sugar addict. Without any conscious intent, you have become addicted to sugar and or its substitutes or byproducts. An experiment at Loma Linda University in California showed that a sugary diet can create alcoholic. Getting sugar out of America's system requires a great effort, not a feeble gesture. Many of us live our lives in progressive sequence of addictions, from sugar to caffeine, nicotine, to alcohol. The illegal drugs are but a short step away. And when we give up one, we usually retain the others. Social scientists have even coined a new term to describe America's multiple addictions. We have become a nation of potty, poly addicts. If all the sugar were taken out of food, our supermarkets would only need to be half as big. If you want to understand the rights and wrongs of the American diet, you need only visit a local supermarket. There you will find the most varied, the cleanest, and the most readily available food supply in the history of the world. You will also find the sweetest, fattest, most synthetic and most nutritionally bankrupt foods man has ever had the misfortune to eat. And you guessed it. These foods are a supermarket's best and biggest sellers. The average person consumes 20% of his or her calories from, the, from some form of refined sugar. This makes it difficult for the body to get the nutrients it needs from the other 80%. 
Many people think they can eat anything they want as long as they take their multivitamin mineral pill daily. Sugar so upsets the body chemistry that it doesn't matter what else you put in your mouth. Neither healthful food nor junk food will digest properly. Somewhere along the path of creating health for myself, I realized how important it was to have enough of the right vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, and amino acids in my diet. I, I, therefore, I became very aware of having a diet that included all of these nutrients. The disastrous effect of sugar on the calcium-phosphorus ratio was first discovered by Dr. Melvin Page, a dentist who noted bone loss in his patients, which he understood as calcium deficiency. Yet these patients all showed normal calcium in their blood. Page consulted with several physicians as to how this could be, and the answer was always the same, quote, if there are 10 units of calcium in the blood, then there is enough calcium in the body. What they didn't realize, and many still don't, is that minerals work only in relation to each other. Fortunately, Page could not accept this, their explanation. He started looking at, their, at other minerals in the body. He found that if you could get a patient's calcium phosphorus ratio, to be the optimum, 10 to 4. The symptoms that led to tooth decay and bone loss, as well as many other negative symptoms, would simply go away. Through further investigation, he discovered that sugar caused the phosphorus to decrease and the calcium to increase. Therefore, although there was more than the necessary amount of calcium in the body, Less of it could be used because of the drop in phosphorus. Once he took his patients off sugar and put them on a diet of whole foods, their dental problems would disappear, and so would many other problems. Researchers have since found that ingesting sugar increases the rate at which we excrete calcium. If when we eat sugar, our blood calcium goes up, and we also excrete it. Every time we ingest even two teaspoons of sugar, the mineral ratios in our bodies can change. These endocrine glands include the pancreas, the pituitary, the thyroid, and hypothalamus, the adrenals, and the gonads. Each gland sends hormones into the bloodstream, chemical messages which determine how the body works. The intake of harmful foods like sugar reduces the efficiency of the glands, causing a smaller secretion or an altered composition of hormones. This, in turn, has a detrimental effect on the body chemistry. Sugar is implicated in a long chain of events in the body which lead to obesity. The minerals in the body become unbalanced. Enzymes don't function correctly. Food does not digest properly, and allergies can occur. Allergies cause addiction. Addiction causes cravings, and overeating is the result. Please turn the tape over for side two. On this side of the tape, we will talk a little bit about the glycemic index. Just as sugar makes you crave more of it, certain foods we think of as innocent have the same ability. These foods, as seemingly benign as white potatoes, quickly boost blood sugar and, accordingly, insulin levels. Consequently, they make you hungry and likely to eat more. When researchers at the University of Toronto tested various carbohydrate foods they found wide and surprising variance in how quickly and how intensely blood sugar levels rose after the foods were eaten. These foods have now been charted according to their glycemic index, which is a measure of speed and intensity of the blood glucose response after the food is eaten. A food with a high glycemic blood, uh, no, with a high glycemic index is a faster releaser 
and should be avoided when trying to control blood sugar. Slow releasers, on the other hand, bring only moderate changes in blood sugar and have a low glycemic index. The following chart will be read. List the glycemic index for a number of carbohydrate foods. <coughs> First of all is honey and sugars. Fructose, 20. Sucrose, 59. Honey is 87. And glucose, of course, is 100. Now bread, pasta, corn, and rice. Whole wheat spaghetti, 42. White spaghetti, 50. Sweet corn, 59. Brown rice, 66. White bread is 69. Whole wheat bread is 72. And white rice is 72. Breakfast cereals, oatmeal, 49. All bran, 51. Shredded wheat, 67. Corn flakes, 80. Fruits, apples, golden delicious, 39. Oranges, 40. Orange juice, 46. Bananas, 62. And raisins, 64. <coughs> Root vegetables. Sweet potatoes, 48. Yams, 51. Beef, 64. White potatoes, 70. Instant mashed potatoes is 80. Carrots is 92. Parsnips, parsnips, 97. Dairy products, skim milk, 32. Whole milk, 34. Ice cream, 36. Yogurt, 36. Peas, beans, dried can, frozen. Soybeans is 15. Lentils is 29. Kidneys, 29. Black eyed peas, 33. Chickpeas, 36. Lima beans, 36. Canned baked beans, 40. Frozen peas, 51. And then into uh, other uh, nuts and seeds. Peanuts is 13. Real low. Sausages, 28. Fish, 6, 38. Tomato soup, 38. Sponge cake, 46. At this time, we'll read a few of the foods, refined sweeteners in foods and beverages, first giving the, uh, the serving size, then the table sugar equivalent in teaspoons, then the sugar calories. So we'll have three figures after we read the product. Here we read Mountain Dew drink, 12 ounces, has 11 teaspoons of sugar, and 100 uh, sugar calories is 100 of total calories, uh, rather 100%. Here we go again, Sprite, again 12 ounces, 9 teaspoons, and 100. Then we have jelly beans, 10 pieces, there's 6.6. .6 uh, teaspoons of sugar and 100% uh, of these are calories. Marshmallows, 9 ounces is 4.8 and 100. Milky Way is 2.1 ounce only is 9 teaspoons of sugar. 21% calories in, in sugar. Cough drops. Beach nut cough drops, one piece, you got nearly a little over a half a teaspoon of sugar. Low fat yogurt, fruit yogurt, one cup is seven and a half teaspoons of sugar, 52% of it is sugar. Vanilla ice cream is a half a cup, it's got, or we'll say a full cup. It's got six and a half teaspoons of sugar. Seventy-four percent is sweet. Calories is in sweet. Just honey nut Cheerios. One small ounce is two and a half teaspoons of sugar. Golden Grahams. 
one ounce is two and a half teaspoons of sugar. Country cornflakes, one ounce is 0.8 ounces, uh, teaspoons of sugar. Honey snacks, one ounce is four teaspoons of sugar. Unbelievable. And so we skip uh, a lot of these, even though they're consumed on a daily basis, the post cereals. Most all of the cereals, dry cereals, are loaded with sugar. But I'll read on down to one last one. Ketchup. One tablespoon serving has 0.6 teaspoons of sugar in one tablespoon. 63% of it is sugar content. So we can see by this table on the glycemic index and also by the listing of the foods and the various amounts of sugar in these that uh, most people consume 10, 20 times too much sugar for their own good health. So, On this side of the tape, we will talk a little bit about the glycemic index. Just as sugar makes you crave more of it, certain foods we think of as innocent have the same ability. These foods, as seemingly benign as white potatoes, quickly boost blood sugar and accordingly insulin levels. Consequently, they make you hungry and likely to eat more. When researchers at the University of Toronto tested various carbohydrate foods, they found wide and surprising variance in how quickly and how intensely blood sugar levels rose after the foods were eaten. These foods have now been charted according to their glycemic index, which is a measure of speed and intensity of the blood glucose response after the food is eaten. A food with a high Blood, uh, no, with a high glycemic index is a faster releaser and should be avoided when trying to control blood sugar. Slow releasers, on the other hand, bring only moderate changes in blood sugar and have a low glycemic index. The following charts will be read. List the glycemic index for a number of carbohydrate foods. First of all is honey and sugars. Fructose, 20. Sucrose, 59. Honey is 87. And glucose, of course, is 100. Now bread, pasta, corn, and rice. Whole wheat spaghetti, 42. White spaghetti, 50. Sweet corn, 59. Brown rice, 66. White bread is 69. Whole wheat bread is 72 and white rice is 72. Breakfast cereals, oatmeal, 49. All bran, 51. Shredded wheat, 67. Cornflakes, 8. Fruits, apples, golden delicious, 39. Oranges, 40. Orange juice, 46. Bananas, 62. And raisins, 64. <coughs> root vegetables, sweet potatoes, 48, yams, 51, beets, 64, white potatoes, 70, instant mashed potatoes is 80, carrots is 92, parsnips, parsnips, 97, dairy products, skim milk, 32, whole milk, 34, ice cream, 36, yogurt, 36, Peas, beans, dried canned frozen. Soybeans is 15. Lentils is 29. Kidneys, 29. 
Black Eyed Peas 33, Chickapees 36, Lima Beans 36, Canned Dutch Beans 40, Frozen Peas 51, and then into uh, other uh, nuts and seeds. Peanuts is 13, real low. Sausages 28, Fish Sticks 38, Tomato Soup 38, Sponge Cake 46. At this time, we'll read a few of the foods, refined sweeters in foods and beverages, first giving the, uh, the serving size, then the table sugar equivalent in teaspoons, then the sugar calories. So we'll have three figures after we read the product. Here we read Mountain Dew drink, 12 ounces, has 11 teaspoons of sugar, and 100 uh, sugar calories is 100 of total calories. Uh, rather, 100%. Here we go again. Sprite, again, 12 ounces, 9 teaspoons, and 100. Then we have jelly beans, 10 pieces, says 6.6 6, uh, teaspoons of sugar, and 100% uh, of these are calories. Marshmallows, 9 ounces is 4.8 and 100. Milky Way is 2.1 ounce only, is 9 teaspoons of sugar, 21% calories in, in sugar. Cough drops, beech nut cough drops, one piece, you got nearly a little over a half a teaspoon of sugar. Low fat yogurt, fruit yogurt, one cup, is seven and a half teaspoons of sugar. Fifty-two percent of it is sugar. Vanilla ice cream is a half a cup. It's got, or I will say, a full cup. It's got six and a half teaspoons of sugar. Seventy-four percent is sweet. Calories is in sweet. Just honey nut Cheerios, one small ounce, is two and a half teaspoons of sugar. Golden grams, one ounce is two and a half teaspoons of sugar. Country cornflakes, one ounce is 0.8 ounces, uh, teaspoons of sugar. Honey snacks, one ounce is four teaspoons of sugar. Unbelievable. And so we skip uh, a lot of these even though they're consumed on a daily basis, the post cereals, most all of the cereals, dry cereals, are loaded with sugar. But I'll read on down to one last one. Ketchup, one tablespoon serving, has 0.6 teaspoons of sugar in one tablespoon. 63% of it is sugar content. So we can see by this table on the glycemic index and also by the listing of the foods and the various amounts of sugar in these that uh, most people consume 10, 20 times too much sugar for their own good health. Stop.